people open the meeting for the Vermilion Local School District Board of Education regular meeting Monday, July 11th, 2022. Call the order, please. Mr. Johnston. Here. Mr. Habermill. Here. Mrs. Russell. Here. Mrs. Stepp. Here. Mrs. Innes. Here. All members present. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Legislative report. <clears throat> Okay, the legislature is still on summer recess, but there's some um, things that Governor DeWine has signed. He signed into law House Bill 583, which we've talked about um, several times, about uh, the educational requirements for substitute teachers. So that is now in place. Um, as far as the national level, uh, President Biden signed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. And this bill provides funding in mental health services, including funding for school-based mental health and support services. And it also includes resources for programs to strengthen safety measures around primary and secondary schools. President Biden also signed the Keep Kids Fed Act. This bill increases reimbursement rates and provides flexibility on compliance with meal patterns and nutrition standard requirements. The bill does not extend the provisions implemented during the pandemic that temporarily allowed all children to be eligible for free meals. Uh, but the bill does allow students eligible for reduced price meals to receive free meals, and it increases the federal reimbursement for those meals. That's all I've got. Any questions? All right, before we go to the superintendent's report, <clears throat> tonight is Mr. Pempin's last meeting, so I'd like to come home myself to thank him for what he's done for this district. Uh, I've known Phil for many years, being that my parents have both worked here or still work here. Uh, I coached in the district, and then the last two years I've had to, got to learn him as a superintendent. And uh, I think he's leaving the district in a great, great place for uh, Dr. Heil to come in. I think he's done an excellent job, especially over the last two years in the pandemic. So happy retirement. I really Thank appreciate you. what you've done for us. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> this, this board and all the previous boards that I've worked with. It's been 14 quick years. And uh, it's been a pleasure to serve the, the district and the community, and uh, I will miss everyone. So thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Phil. Yeah, just no. It, it's been a it's been a really good run. The, I've been on the board for nine plus years now, and you know you kind of helped me when I first came on the board understand what the role of the board member is, and and I think it's been a really great relationship. I really appreciate everything you've done for the district and. And um, like Eric said, I think we're leaving it in great hands. So thank you very much and congratulations. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And uh, Phil, I want to thank you for your leadership and vision. You're an out of the box thinker. You've moved the district forward. You've done the one to one, the laptops. You've done everything on one campus. You've done the drug testing. You've done the workforce development program, um, having a um, the health clinic in the high school. So all those ideas that you had, you worked hard and made them uh, come to fruition. And we appreciate that. And you've made the district a better place. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure, as I said, serving the community. And uh, they were fast years, that's for sure. But look forward to now being with my grandkids and another yeah. phase of life. Well deserved. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we. I just wanted to thank you, too. I mean, I've been on the board for six years. And I feel like, as a leader, you've been patient and kind with all of us. Um, you've taught us to be patient and kind, and you've led us with grace. And I just think that learning from you to, to have patience and some grace has been probably the biggest thing I've gotten out of you, and one of the many things. And I, I just hope for you that all of the kindness and patience and grace that you've given to your staff, your administrators, your students, comes back to you tenfold because you deserve that. Thanks for your kind words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I agree with what everybody said. <laughs> I got the, the fifth spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I've been on the board the least amount of time of everybody, but I have to say, you know, you've made it easy. I mean, truthfully, and I'm so thankful for that. And, and the experience that we've gone through these past couple of years, I couldn't imagine facing the challenges that we faced 
with anybody else as a leader other than you. You just, you, you took it and you did a wonderful job at it. <coughs> You've made this a district that I'm proud to have my children go to and, and all of the other kids in the district. And I just hope retirement is wonderful for you because you deserve it. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Moving on to the superintendent's report. Okay. It's my pleasure tonight to have our eSports team here. Uh, they have done something that we have not had in a long, long time in this district, and uh, they did it in their first year. They brought home a state championship their first year. Uh, that's going to be hard to duplicate, but uh, <laughs> uh, as you know, we had talked about having an eSports team here. We brought it before the community, talked about the pros and cons of having such a program and the kids got up I think in at, at one of the board meetings and they did the best presentation that anyone could have done and yeah. pleaded the case of why we should have one and uh, so they're here tonight as a living testament of how it worked out and I'm sure that if you can say a few words to us tonight and I, I don't know if you were planning on talking or not but it would be great to hear about your experience and what you did to accomplish this. Yeah, I was going to talk a little bit about it later, um, whatever you want to do. It's good right now, if you don't mind. That would be fantastic. <laughs> so, um, so our two captains are here. Uh, we have Brett Moyes and Mason Henderson. Uh, they were the captains of the Fortnite team that made it to States. Um, so this is the first, per or the first year we've had for our program. We bought the computers literally a week before we started competition. So it was really nice to go from that um, and watching them grow throughout the season, um, progressing from starting off saying, we're going to take it all the way. I'm like, calm down, guys. Let's, <laughs> let's get there first and then get excited about it. Uh, all the way through to the end, it was so awesome just to have them um, kind of helping running and manage the team. Uh, and for our Fortnite team, their oldest students were two sophomores. And so we've got a lot of growth and a lot of um, potential coming up through the, through the ranks. Um, we also have three more teams, and we're looking to progress and build that program and add in streaming so we can reach out to the community so that other <laughs> students can watch and parents can be involved with what we have going on. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of hopes and dreams we'd like to move forward in the future. Do you have anything you want to say? And then one of our... Um, one of our kids that we had in through our program who wasn't able to play one of the in one of the games because he was also in baseball, um, he was the one who set up the whole um, the whole pr uh, thing we did before before for you guys, the whole mm -hmm. PowerPoint presentation mm -hmm. and everything. He was one of the kids who had that. And Matt, do you have? He said he sent you the thing. Do you want to come up and read it? Or do you want me to? Because he just sent it to me. So he had something. He said he couldn't make it today, but he he had wanted to say a thank you to you guys. Yeah. Um, he said, thank you board members and parents for allowing this club to proceed. Sorry I could not make the meeting, but I'd like to leave a message. I'm so proud and glad to have these wonderful students show their personal abilities in um, f their favorite games to compete. Uh, with a great turnout of new students, we have high hopes this club will be beneficial for student involvement in future years. I'd like to again congratulate the Fortnite team for winning the state championship. Their example shows how esports can have a positive impact on the team bonding and future possibilities with colleagues and colleges. Uh, thank you for board members for listening and accepting or, and being accepting of this club back in January. I am very proud for contributing my help to get esports up and running. Thank you again and go Sailors. And that was from Brendan D. Well, you guys are awesome. We yes. appreciate you <laughs> wanting to do something new and different. And we're, we're very proud of you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, great job. I, Excellent I, job. Great I was, uh, I, I just, I want to say I was probably the most skeptical of everyone when you guys first presented. Not really sure about whether video games are a positive or a negative impact, but, you know, the, the championship and, and everything is kind of icing on the cake. Just the fact that you guys made it a successful program is fantastic. And um, we got feedback from staff members about what a good experience it's yeah. been for you guys. Um, I think Mrs. Reaney came and talked to us, and, and you know, she's probably as old school or more than I am, right? So I mean, she's she even said, you know, what a difference, you know, that it, it really was a positive impact on all the kids that participated. So, congratulations, great job, and, and keep doing a good, you know, keep it up, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Nice. Congratulations.
Okay, the second item on my report is to do an introduction and per ask the board to approve a one-year certified limited con contract for teaching for the 2022-23 school year. In the audience tonight, we've got David Hathaway, and he's going to be teaching at the high school, our VHS integrated math. David, would you mind coming up to the microphone and just giving us a little bit of your background? Sure. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Superintendent said, uh, I'm David Hathaway. I am most recently uh, transferring from Oberlin High School to uh, Vermilion. Uh, before Ver uh, Oberlin, I was teaching in Africa, actually, for 10 years, five years with Peace Corps and five more years on my own. And before that, I was working in Cincinnati. And before that, I was an engineer. So I've got a few years under my belt, and I'm ready for a brand new, uh, wonderful uh, new beginning here uh, at Vermilion. And I'll be teaching uh, math and uh, AP calculus and some uh, freshman algebra. I'm very much looking forward to it, working with all of you. Thank you. Welcome, Welcome to the community and the staff. Thank you. All right, next I'd like to introduce Garrig Gabry and he's going to be the high school health and phys ed teacher. And same thing, Garrick, if you would come up and just say a few words about yourself and introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, my name is Garrick. Uh, pretty much the complete opposite. Just graduated from Bowling Green <laughs> in May. So fresh out of college, my first year teaching. I'm familiar with the area. Grew up down the road in Amherst. Went to Amherst my whole life. And none of those Nothing much else to add, but I'm excited to join the district and look forward to things to come. Welcome, Welcome to the staff. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so that's a, once again, a one year <coughs> limited <coughs> teacher contract for both of them. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Ennis. Yes. Mrs. Russell. <coughs> yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. <coughs> okay, I put the introduction, kind of integrated it all into <laughs> one there for item number three, so I think that that worked probably better before they were uh, accepted the contract, so you got a chance to know them a little bit first, not that you would have voted them down. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number four, a one-year additional duty contract for the 22-23 school year for Kurt Innes as the head soccer coach at level 24. Leah Ennis, the head football cheer advisor, level two, step four, and Leah Ennis, <coughs> teacher directed seminar, National History Day, level two, step six. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Ennis. Abstain. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, four yeas, one abstention. Okay, item number five is to recommend a resolution to approve Mercy Health's nurse service agreement with Vermilion Local School District for three LPNs at $35 per hour for the 22-23 school year. Attachment A, we had already voted on this at a previous board meeting, but we went back to the table after talking to Lorain County, and so we approached Lorain County and Mercy again, and we're able to renegotiate this rate at a lower rate. So this is a, a financial win for the district. I'll move. A second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Item number six is to re recommend a resolution to approve the three-year contract with Houghton Mifflin Hardcourt for the Ohio Science Fusion Curriculum for grades four through eight at a total cost of $51,727.48, which the details were offered to you in attachment B. Just some quick comments about this. Uh, this was done by committee, and it was done with our science teachers uh, at the, the grades, grade levels four through eight. Uh, our curriculum that we were using prior to this was FOSS, and it was a hands-on type curriculum. We compared it to 
a couple others, and this was the one that the committee had chosen unanimously. So it was done with teacher input and with administration input, and uh, they're very happy with the change. And there was also some changes that FOSS had made uh, that, that really the teachers had looked at that they just didn't like and did not want to continue with that series. So this is uh, their, their curriculum of choice, and we always try to get the, the input per the committee on this selection. Any questions? I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Okay, and I'm happy to recommend a resolution to approve the graduating class of 2022. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Okay, and that was the last item on my superintendent's <coughs> report. Thank you. Like your, your last superintendent's report. Last. Oh, right. no, I know. Very last. <laughs> yes, thank you. You can keep going if you want. Yeah. Uh, you want Do the treasurer's <laughs> report just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Klingstern. Thank you. Uh, number one, recommend a resolution to approve the financial report for June 2022, attachment D. I'll move. I'll second. Uh, so first, we'll take a look at the general fund. We'll look at revenues first, followed by expenditures, followed by cash. Uh, through the fiscal year, the district received $24 million in general fund revenue, compared to $24.2 million last year at this time, and $23.2 million in fiscal year 20. Uh, the district collected its historical average revenue, slightly less than last year. Moving on to food service revenue, through the fiscal year, the district received $1 million in food service revenue, Revenue compared to 627,000 last year and 516,000 in fiscal year 20. Uh, the district received significantly more revenue than it historically has, uh, primarily because the federal government provided all students with free and reduced breakfast and lunch. Uh, starting in July, this will no longer be the case, and our revenue will drop back down to our historical averages, assuming participation returns back to our historical averages as well. Uh, taking a look at all funds for the revenue side, through the end of the fiscal year, the district received $31.3 million in all funds, compared to $28.7 million in fiscal year 21 and $26.5 million in fiscal year 20. Uh, the district was able to collect additional federal grants that historically <laughs> did not exist. Uh, because the grants reimbursed the district, we were able to transfer $2 million from the general fund to the capital projects fund. This reclass and subsequent transfer did inflate our revenue and by default it also increased our expenditures by two million dollars moving on to the expenditure side for the general fund through the fiscal year the district expended 23 million dollars in general fund uh, compared to 22.4 million uh, last year at this time and 23.1 million in fiscal year 20. on average the district spent its historical average Moving on to food service, through the end of the fiscal year, the district expended $868,000 in food service compared to $618,000 last year and $730,000 in fiscal year 20. Um, our expenses exceeded our historical averages because A, we're serving more meals and also the cost of those meals has increased. And then moving on to all funds, through the end of the fiscal year, the district expended $28.5 million from all funds compared to $26.5 million last year and $26.5 million in fiscal year 20. Uh, the district spent its historical average minus that transfer for the capital projects of $2 million. And then moving on to cash, uh, looking at the general funds through the fiscal year, the district has a total of $18.9 million in cash uh, compared to $17.9 in fiscal year 21 and $16 million in fiscal year 20. Looking at food service through the end of the fiscal year, the district has a total of 391000 in cash compared to 183000 last year and 173000 in fiscal year 20. And then moving to all cash through the, uh, our all funds cash through the end of the fiscal year, the district has a total of $24.3 in cash 
uh, compared to 21.5 million at last year and 19.4 in fiscal year 20. On the investment side, through the uh, end of the fiscal year, the district <coughs> earned a total of $160,085.67 on interest compared to $183,617.54 last year. It's a difference of $23,500 or 12.8%. Uh, bond rates and everything else are starting to go back up, so we'll continue to see those Huntington accounts and those Star Ohio accounts be a little bit higher than they were each, year, each month. Any questions? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved 5-0. Number two, recommend a resolution to accept the following donations in memory of Edward Zimke to the athletic fund as listed. I'll move. A second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Number three, recommend a resolution to accept a donation of $1,500 from the athletic boosters to the Sailor Fund. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Number four, recommend a resolution to accept the donation of a Canon printer head valued at $595 from Dave Rice. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Number five, recommend a resolution to approve the fiscal year 2022 final appropriations, transfers, and advances, and that is attachment E. I'll move. I'll second. All right, on these. Um, all in all, from the appropriations I presented to the board in June till now, uh, we reduced our final appropriations by $845,000. Uh, most notably in the ESSER 3, the 507 fund, and also the uh, 070 safety and security fund. We didn't spend that much, so I just reduced those down. Um, and then as far as the transfers and advances go, uh, we did have to advance um, $21,524.31 to the ARP ESSER funds. Again, what that means is that um, we, have, uh, we have been spending money throughout the month um, for summer school and I just ODE will not get us uh, reimbursement for that time so we need to run it negative uh, I'll return that advance this month and then I'll seek the reimbursement from ODE make it make it whole uh, the other ones the transfers the advances alone the transfers are, are truly just we're giving them money so we did advance three thousand five hundred and seventy six dollars and forty two cents to make our title one um, whole we just spent a little bit more than, than what we received from reimbursement wise uh, we did transfer $15,550.82 to the prom fund. Um, that starts prom <laughs> off July 1 with a $12,000 balance, so they're able to spend throughout the year to buy things for the prom. And then we transferred $33,242.04 to athletics. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved 5-0. Number six, recommend a resolution to approve the renewal of the property and casualty insurance proposal from Fitzgibbons and Arnold and Company for Wright Specialty <coughs> American Family effective July 1st, 2022 through July 1st, 2023 at a cost, the actual cost is $97,356. That $106,000 was our, our renewal for Liberty if we would have stayed with them. Mm. What was it again, Justin, 97? Um, the current insurance company we're with is Liberty. Their renewal was $106,937. Uh, um, our cost for Wright American Family is $97,356. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll move. I'll second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. 
Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mrs. Stepp? Yes. Motion approved 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. The consent agenda. The superintendent and treasurers <clears throat> recommend that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda items. Action by the Board of Education in adoption of the consent agenda means all items are adopted by one single motion unless a member of the board, the treasurer, or superintendent requests any such items be removed from the consent agenda and voted upon separately. Number one is the minutes of the June 13th, 2022 meeting. Number two, approve the 2022-2023 school handbooks for Vermilion High School, Sailor Way Middle School, and Vermilion Elementary School. <clears throat> Number three is approve the 2022-2023 school fees, VES at $37, uh, SMS grade four 40 grade five through seven 40 with no band and 52 with band and the high school for course fees number four is review and revise dates for policies 2111 2261 .01, and 2623 number five is improvement of employment actions resignation as listed number six is retirements effective August 15, 2023, as listed. Number seven is maternity leave, as listed. Number eight is a one-year special project rate contract. We have Katie, is it? Shea. Shea. Katie Shea for dys dyslexia training. Alan Seeley, up to 24 hours of training. And Adam Beckwith, up to 24 hours of training. Number nine is a one-year per diem contract, pre-employment transition for curriculum and implementation plan for the WFD Digital Academy <clears throat> as listed. Number 10 is a one year additional duties contract for the 2022-2023 school year for the fall activities as listed. Number 11 is a one year non-teaching supplemental contract for the 2022-2023 school year. Those are as listed. <clears throat> Number 11 is a one-year non-teaching supplemental contract for the 2022-2023 school year, as listed. Number 12 is a one-year classified limited contract for the 2022-2023 school year to William Beck, bus driver, and Jeffrey Thayer, mechanic. And number 13 is up to 64 hours of flex time to be used from August 1, 2022 to July 31, 2023 to Jenny Snyder. Any questions or items need to be removed? Mm -hmm. I'll move. A second. Call roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, 5-0. Okay, next on the agenda will be the public participation. <clears throat> so I'm actually, I need to make a motion first to move that from after executive to be before executive. Yeah. So I'll a move. Motion. A second. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved 5-0. The public participation section of the Board of Education's agenda is specifically designed for the public to address the board with their compliments, concerns, and or questions. The board welcomes your comments. <clears throat> if you wish to address the board regarding a problem, the board would remind you of two things. First, your comments should be factual and respectful of the rights of others. Second, before coming to the board with a specific problem, you should have first addressed the problem with the appropriate, appropriate teacher, staff member, or administrator. This meeting of the Board, board of Education is public is for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. Anyone for public participation tonight? Uh, How are you guys? Good. Um, Kathleen Byer, I don't have to say my address, do I? Oh. No? Okay, cool. Um, for one, I wanted to say your eSports. My nephew is a big gamer and he like talked me all into it because he's like, you know, shouldn't it be? And it's huge with scholarships and stuff. Yeah. So I think you guys are doing great and it's awesome. So, and I was a huge skeptic. So, cause I'm like video games and just, I'm not, not my thing. Anyways, but I did want to address tonight, 
my daughter came in here not last time but previously and in front of her principal was brave enough to let you guys and inform you guys about the search and seizures that you guys are doing. Um, specifically the searches on eighth grade uh, girls. I wasn't going to get involved but now I feel like I have to after uh, you decided last time to uh, say you're just going to continue doing it. These kids have due process rights and that's in your, that's in your guidelines. Due process you have to follow reasonable suspicion under what a, what a police officer would do that, and probable cause. You can't group search children either, nor can any of your administration touch them in a private area and shake their bra. She did something very brave, and I have firsthand information from one of the little girls that it happened to. I was, she was sleeping over one night, they were talking, and this just got brought up. And I wasn't going to really make that big of a deal because I'm like, oh, maybe that was a one-time thing. It's not a one-time thing. After she said something at your board meeting, she was, she was thanked by a countless little girls. It is not appropriate to search our children. Marijuana has been around since I was in high school. People came in stone. Really, you should be worried about heroin and fentanyl instead of vapes. And you can't be the vape police. And if a kid, a group of kids are in a bathroom and a vape detector goes off, you're not allowed to group search. They have rights. And you should be getting a hold of parents. The parents need to be involved. And I think half the issue here is no one gets a hold of them because you guys think sometimes we don't care. Sometimes we don't know what's going on. And all of us as parents know that. These kids, and they don't want to get in trouble. They're not going to tell mom and dad, like, hey, I was searched today at school. Do you think they're going to say that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You cannot search these kids. And I would go back and read your policies. And parentis, local and parentis, your principal used that on me. That means a judge gave you custody of my child. And that, that was reaffirmed by DJ Swearingen, who's our house representative for this district and is also an attorney. He said, you cannot use that. That is not appropriate. <clears throat> you do not have custody of our children. A judge didn't give you that order. So stop saying that to parents because many of your staff has said to me, per, per, uh, loco parentis, I have, and that means you, I gave you custody of my child. That is not what that means. And I would suggest you read the Mayorkas last year came out with the Supreme Court statement about that. I suggest you all read it. That is not a law, and a judge didn't give you an order. Stop searching minors. Your time's up. Work you with up, your please. staff and read, read what your guys' rights are because you're putting yourselves in a dangerous situation. And the last thing I do want to do is sue because money's not going to solve this. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Hi, uh, Eric Jones. Um, again, I think everybody here, Adam, your team did a great job. Um, I think we're all very surprised in the first year that your, your team was able to do that, so kudos. Um, so I actually had a question. I don't know who to address. I'm guessing Eric. Um, so I have a, a problem with perhaps the, the, the vape sensors that are in the bathroom. And we don't know exactly how that works and we can't find any information on that. So I had a similar situation where um, my daughter tells me a few weeks ago, it's, for me it's not a giant as a big of a deal because she told me that Mr. Lacasco approached her as she had came out of the bathroom and made her empty her pockets on the spot. And something about he gets a text on his phone that the sensors in the bathroom, the vape yeah. sensor, is this something that actually happens? Do we, do we have some kind of clarification? Cool. Because I, I don't know what these vape sensors are, what they're how they work, um, it seems very, very suspect to me to have vape sensors. We wonder if perfume or different scents, um, and, and even the legality of 
searching somebody if, if he's getting a text on his phone and he immediately comes does the girls coming out of the bathroom are they the ones that are responsible or the girls that just went into the bathroom my daughter said that he actually took down her name and said that the next time that she's caught with that vape sensor that that's reasonable suspicion so now my daughter has a 4.3 gpa she's a obviously a straight-A student uh, in three separate sports. Um, she's on the, pre uh, the principal's advisory committee. Um, this isn't a, a typical student that would, even if we were profiling for something like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm really questioning the aggressive manner on this. So how do we find out information on these vape sensors? So let me, first off, let me get, what school is she in? She's here. And who was the staff, or who was the teacher? I, I believe it was Mr. Lacasco. All right. So we can we'll provide a written report. Yeah. So can we look into and provide something to you by sure, next sure. by next meeting? Yeah, that's that's fine. We just want to know like what is the specs, all the details sure. on that because we, we're it. literally yep. big question marks. Yep, I on get that. it. Yeah, if you can give so, us time to look into it and provide. And Katie is right. There is some something, <laughs> even though she was just required to empty her pockets, male teachers asking to search a female students seems to be a little inappropriate. So I hope that we can possibly address that as well. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other? Dates and locations of upcoming board meetings. Meetings will be held at the Vermilion High School Commons, 1250 Sanford Street, Vermilion, unless otherwise noted. Regular meeting Monday, August 8th, 6 p.m. Regular meeting Monday, September 12th, 6 p.m. And regular meeting Monday, October 10th at 6 p.m. Number 10, actually it's 11. So recommended resolution of the board <coughs> to move into executive possession for matters required kept confidential by federal laws, rules, or state statutes. I'll move. A second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved 5 0. Right, Time is 6 37 p.m. Number 11 on the agenda board business. One, recommend a resolution to approve the 2022 to 2025 master contract between the Board of Education, Vermilion Local School District, and the Ohio. Association of Public School Employees, OPC Local 332, AFSCME, AFL, CIO. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Stained. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved, four yeas, one abstention. All right. Um, adjournment. Number two. Nope. Oh, we got number two. I do have a number two. No, right there. Sorry. <laughs> Recommend the resolution to approve. Is it McKenna? McKenna. Oh, McKenna. McKenna, Maslin, Leonardo, Leonardo to receive her high school diploma. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved 5 0. All right. Motion for adjournment. I'll move. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Habermill. Yes. Mrs. Innes. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mrs. Stepp. Yes. Motion approved 5 0, and the time is 7 15 p.m.